Today, I'm gonna to install Pivot Animator and see if I can learn it as fast as possible to make a decent animation. Hey everyone, I'm Alan Stark, and as always, welcome to the video. A while ago, I talked about Pivot Animator in one of my videos, but honestly, I remember trying it years ago. Back then, I never really wanted to stick with it, but recently, it's gotten a lot better, way more polished and complete. But there's also a huge problem with it, and we're gonna talk about that. So, stick around. All right, let's start with downloading and installing it. Pivot Animator has an official website where you can download it easily, or at least that's what I thought. But turns out it's not that simple. My antivirus instantly flagged the installer as a virus, and I'm sure a lot of you have had the same issue. But don't panic, this could just be a false alarm from the antivirus. So I downloaded the file again, and this time my antivirus didn't detect it as a virus. Instead, the app and browser control section just marked it as an unknown file. As you can see, it wasn't deleted or anything, but still, that's not enough to be sure, right? So I did a little research and even asked ChatGPT about it. Turns out Pivot Animator is completely free and to make money, the developer includes some ads in the installer. That's likely why some antiviruses flag it. Even ChatGPT confirmed this. Bottom line, Pivot Animator itself is safe. If you want to install it, just make sure to decline any extra software that might pop up during installation. Sometimes, free software tries to sneak in additional programs, so be careful. And if your antivirus does detect it as a virus, you can temporarily disable it, install Pivot Animator, and then turn your antivirus back on and run a full scan, just like I did. But honestly, I'm pretty sure it's safe. This software has been around for years and has a legit website. But if you're still feeling a bit unsure, don't worry, I've got you covered. I did some digging and found a clean ad-free version of Pivot Animator on a legit site called FileHorse. So I downloaded that version too and uploaded it to VirusTotal to scan it with multiple antiviruses. And as you can see, every single scan came back clean, no viruses at all. Just to be extra sure, I even installed and opened it myself. So yeah, if you're looking for a 100% safe version, this one should give you peace of mind. All right, now that we know for sure the software isn't a virus, it's time to learn it as fast as possible and try to make a simple animation. Like I said earlier, I actually installed Pivot Animator years ago, but I never really used it, not even for a single frame. So when I opened the software, the first thing I did was check out the tools. Then, while looking through the file menu, I found something called Load Figure Type, which lets you easily load saved stick figures, but only if they were created in Pivot Animator. Next, in the View menu, I noticed a button called Show Virtual Camera. Clicking on it revealed a camera tool that I could move, zoom in, and zoom out. That actually made me happy because having a camera tool is super important in any animation software. The frame rate controls were on the left panel, allowing me to adjust FPS while animating, which is really useful. At this point, I wanted to animate a simple walk cycle using the default stick figure. But honestly, I felt like it looked a bit too thick and I also wanted to change its color. So first I decided to make the stick figure slimmer. I clicked the pen icon on the left panel, which opened up the figure editor. It looked a bit confusing at first, but when I clicked on a node and used the up and down arrows, I realized that it changes the size. There was even a size indicator at the bottom. So I quickly adjusted the figure's width to make it thinner. Once I was done, I needed to either save it or add it to the animation. I went to the file menu and found an option called Add to Animation. I clicked on it, and boom, my modified stick figure was now in the main scene. Now that my character is ready, I decided to play around with some of the new tools added in the latest updates to see how they work. And honestly, I was surprised. These tools give animators some really solid features to create amazing stick figure animations. After adding my character back, I wanted to change its color. Luckily, that was really simple. And since I still felt like the default stick figure was too thick, I used the same tool from earlier to make it thinner again. Once it was slimmer, 
I also scaled it down a bit and moved it to the side of the screen, since my goal is to animate a simple running cycle. Now all I need is a background, so I took a screenshot of my Windows desktop using LightShot and saved it. Then, I tried to drag the image directly into the software to import it, but that didn't work. So I was looking through the file menu for an option to add a background, and that's when I found Load Background Image. I clicked on it, and just like that, the background was added super easily. I set up the starting pose for my stick figure, changed its color, and then I noticed something. It had no wrists or ankles. So I went into the Edit Stick Figure menu, and after a bit of experimenting, I finally figured out how to add hands and feet to the character. Once that was done, I repeated the previous steps, importing it into the animation, resizing it, deleting the old stick figure, changing its color, and setting up the initial pose. I also reset the camera frame back to its default position using the View menu. Now, it's time to animate the running cycle. I clicked Add Frame and saw that I could easily create new frames. So I made the first and second frames, then started setting up my key running pose in frame two. Once I was happy with it, I clicked Update Frame to save it. While checking the frames, I noticed a green line between them. It turns out this line controls the in-between frames. If I adjust it, the software automatically tweens between the keyframes, even if I don't manually create the in-betweens myself. That's super useful, but it's a bit buggy. It doesn't always create smooth and natural motion, but in some cases, it's a huge time saver. I kept going and created six keyframes for the running cycle. Then I thought, wait, why don't I just copy these frames instead of redrawing them? That would save me so much time. So I looked for a way to copy and paste frames, and I finally found an option in the top menu that let me do it easily. With just a few clicks, I duplicated my keyframes and made a few small adjustments, speeding up the process a lot. After setting up the keyframes, I hit play and immediately noticed something. The animation was way too fast. That's because it was running at 24 FPS, but there weren't enough in-between frames to make the motion look smooth. At first I thought, maybe I can just use the in-between frame tool to fix this automatically. But after trying it, I wasn't really happy with how it looked. So I decided to manually add the in-betweens instead. And finally, I managed to create a running animation in the fastest time possible using this awesome and simple software. Of course, I could have made it even smoother and worked even faster. But for my first attempt, I'd say it turned out pretty great. Next time, I'm sure I'll be able to animate even faster in this software. If you haven't tried Pivot Animator yet, I highly recommend checking it out. It's super beginner friendly for anyone who wants to get into stick figure animation. It does have some drawbacks though, like the lack of a guideline feature, which would have been really useful. But overall, if I could learn this software quickly, so can you. Hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, don't forget to like, share, and leave a comment letting me know what you think about this video and the software. Thanks for watching till the end. Peace out.